Hello, uh, my name is Giles Parkinson. I'm the editor of The Driven, and we're doing a video of the new Hyundai Ionic 5 electric car. Now, this is not a Hyundai's first electric car. They've done the Kona and the earlier Ionic, but they were essentially petrol cars which were just sort of converted to electric. Here with the Ionic 5, they've actually started from the ground up, and it's a specific electric design and it's already impressed a lot of people. It's won so many car awards, the Car of the Year award, all sorts of different things. And it's really quite exciting. It's a compact SUV. We haven't seen many really good uh, electric cars with compact SUVs yet. And it's the inside which is really exciting because of the way they've used space. Let's go and get a taste of this car. Let's go in and see what it's like to drive. So there's some pretty cool features as you um, driving along. One is this little visualization that you get when you turn right. There's a camera in the uh, side mirror and it gives you a really good view of what's happening in the right hand lane. Particularly useful when you're going down a highway and changing lanes and just making sure there's no one caught in your blind spot. So that's pretty cool. This car actually has three levels, four levels of regeneration. There's one, a slight slowing down, I press this paddle again, I get two, a bit more grippier. What I like most is what they call iPedal, and it's the fourth level of regeneration. Basically, you, what you do, you take your foot off the accelerator, and you slow down quite quickly, and you come to a stop. Basically, what that means is that you only, basically, it's one pedal driving. Maybe it's not iPedal, maybe it's called one pedal. But, but it, it's, and I love it. I mean, I've been driving electric cars for a couple of years now, and I really like the fact that you very rarely need to touch the brake unless you're going down a steep hill or there's some level of emergency because you know something's happened on the road and you need to stop really, really quickly. And it's, I find it a really relaxing way of driving, along with the fact that there's no engine noise, so one of the great advantages of starting an electric vehicle design from the ground up and sort of forgetting about the way the petrol and diesel cars looked is that you can actually create this enormous amount of space. We've pushed the wheels forward, we've pushed them out, we don't have a big engine there, we've got a smaller motor so the dashboard can move forward and then you start with a flat floor because you don't have all the gear area here, you don't have all the other little controls and you really got this feeling of space and this is amplified this actually just goes forward if you want it for convenience and then this can go back this feeling of space is really the new future for vehicles and we even heard that some of the next models that will come along are what's called the Ionic 7 or the EV9 might even have swivel seats. So if you could just imagine the seats going forward and then being able to sort of swing around and you've got like a lounge type effect. Now, we haven't quite got to that yet here, but what we do have is this real sense of space and um, that makes the driving just really pleasurable and relaxing. So this is what you see as the driver. It's a pretty clean instrumental panel. Um, looks nice, two screens. The fact that they've taken some of the instrumentation away from here to create this space means that around the steering wheel it's fairly busy and there's lots of different buttons here for your, your media, your navigation, your map and things like that. But one gripe with this car is that it's a bit too fussy sometimes and sometimes it's not clear exactly which buttons you need to push and sometimes I find myself having to push buttons two or three times to either sort of switch the car off or switch the car on and I think some work needs to be done on just simplifying that and making that easier. Exciting things about the Ionic 5 is its capability of vehicle to load. Now basically this means it's got a really big battery in it. And this allows you to use the battery to power any appliance. Now you might want to do it for your power tools, you might want to do it for camping, you might want to boil a kettle, which is exactly what we're going to do in a minute. Um, or if you run out of power in your home because there's been a blackout or something like that, you can just run a cord out from the house and plug it in to the charging port. Now, in some of the cars that will come, there's actually just going to be a 240 volt, just a normal standard plug in the back seat. 
This model doesn't have that yet in Australia for reasons I don't actually understand, but you can do it by just using the charging port. Let's see how that works. You need a special adapter to convert it from DC into AC. And this is it. Just a normal standard 240 volt plug. We put this into the charging port. So this is pretty impressive actually. It's Here it is, the car boiling a kettle. The kettle probably has an element that requires three kilowatts or four kilowatts, I don't actually know. This car can deliver 4.6 kilowatts, which is plenty for most things and most appliances and most power tools even. But this has got a big battery. I mean, if it needed to, it could probably power your house for about a week, which is quite amazing. But look, we're just having a cup of tea now and um, it's boiling away and it's a beautiful thing. That is most definitely my first cup of tea brought to me by an electric car. It's a pretty satisfying experience. This Hyundai Ioniq 5 is a really impressive car. I mean, it's a beautiful car to drive. It can get you long distances, a range of 400 kilometers in the city, easy 350 out in the country roads. It's spacious inside. It's giving us a view of what the electric car future will be. So much space, but um, for me, this is the killer. This is the vehicle to load. One day we're gonna be plugging these cars back into the grid. They're gonna be like batteries on wheels and mobile batteries. Um, this is just a really simple way of just using the battery and using it for your cup of tea and for anything you want really. And um, look, it's just a fantastic experience. I guess one of the issues is that um, it's still an expensive car. This is gonna cost you about $80,000. They should probably be about fifty or sixty thousand dollars, and there should be cheaper electric vehicles, which are really quite simple, of about twenty and thirty thousand dollars. But look, they're coming. Remember the first TVs you got, the first big widescreen TVs. They cost a thousand dollars or more, or maybe even multiples of thousands. I don't know. I never actually bought one until they came down to sort of peppercorn prices. And the same thing's going to have happen with electric vehicles. But look. You know, once you've driven one of these, why would you ever go back to a petrol or a diesel car? They don't work, ruin your weekend. Here we are on a Saturday, we're having a cup of tea out in the park. It's got a tow bar. I can drive wherever I want. It's the future and they're here right now. Cheers. We do have to find a way to make sure that no one's going to bring their TV sets to the campsite because that's just going to be awful. And if that happens, then we should blend the bloody thing straight away.